Hi, this is Brendan from Watto Training, and in this tutorial, we take a look at level 3 driving skills for C Class Learner drivers. This tutorial focuses on the what as opposed to the how. For how to videos, go to the Watto Training YouTube channel. There are five levels of skill development for C Class Learner drivers. The model that was used as a reference was the Novice to Mastery model in which there are four distinct stages of mastery. Novice, competent, experienced, and master or expert. If you relate these four stages to the driving experience, you would say a, a learner driver does match up to a novice and also could become quite competent. But experience only comes after a prolonged period of driving and to call someone a master driver or expert would be something that we wouldn't say a learner driver achieves on the day that they pass their driving test. And also on the day they pass their driving test, they reset as an independent driver without a supervisor or a trainer. So they have to basically start over again in that next phase of their driving journey. So coming back to the five levels of skill development for C-class learners, we start at level one and progress through each level up to level five. What we can see in the diagram is the blue rectangles show a very approximate amount of time that a, tr that a learner driver might spend in each level as they progress through from levels one to five. The red lines on the right of screen show us that as we're progressing through, we may need to double back and work on some of the fundamental skills in lower levels so it's quite possible, that, for example, that a student could be a competent on-road driver, but they may still struggle with some of the maneuvers. So there might be a level four driver for general driving, but a level three driver for maneuvers. So there's flexibility in the model. So why have levels? Working up through the levels with the learner allows a trainer to break complex tasks into their foundational elements and have students practice on these smaller elements before asking them to perform more complex problems independently. Let's have a look at the five levels. Level one, beginner, no experience, focus on foundational skills, cabin drill and controls, observation and scanning, move off and stop, steering and signaling. This is an example of a level one training location. Level two, using our foundational skills, observation and scanning, moving off, stopping into a quiet, on road, moving into quiet on-road situations such as residential areas, 40, 50, 60 zones, left and right turns, simple roundabouts and T-sections, and starting to work on our maneuvers. This is an example of a level two training location. Level three, using foundational skills in a broader range of situations, for example, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80 speed zones, as well as broadening traffic situations. Lots of teaching and guidance in this section, lots of practice, time on task, skill building, and more maneuvers. This is an example of a level three training location. Level four, putting level three skills into practice in higher order situations, for example, higher speed zones, busier traffic, complex intersections and roundabouts, training where necessary in higher order skills, but an increasing focus on the learner taking responsibility for hazard recognition and decision making, as well as operational skills, maneuvers, and the trainer uses more coaching techniques than instructional techniques. This is an example of a level four training area. Note, busier traffic, dual carriageway, truck parked on the left side of the road. The learner's got some decisions to make. Level five, now we're looking at test practice using level four driving skills. This is informal assessment and feedback by the trainer. The learner driver is encouraged to self-reflect on their own performance. Focus as well on preparing for driving beyond the test. As solo driver with no supervisor trainer present, hence the added responsibility. Here are some examples of level five training situations. A, we've got keep clear, traffic lights, pedestrian crossing. B, we've got a bus stopped on the side of the road. C, we have a level crossing. And D, 
we have a cyclist riding on the left side of the road. Now, one would note that these situations can appear in lower levels, but the difference between level five is that the trainer is assessing the manner in which the learner driver identifies the hazard, then responds to the hazard, and then they can record that performance and give them feedback. We have two types of trainers. We have automatic trainers, we have manual trainers. We have those who can do both. As you go through this tutorial, take away the information that suits your transmission type. Let's look at some general training strategies for level two C-class learner drivers. Abraham Lincoln once said, give me six hours to chop down a tree and I will spend the first four sharpening the ax. So planning and preparation is a critical part of delivery for training our level three drivers. Let's take a look at what is known as the priority triangle. Make sure when you're delivering training to your learners that you focus your energies to the top of that pyramid, the must know. What does the student need to know to perform the required tasks of this session? What are we trying to achieve? You may find that you discuss some should knows and even every now and then some nice to knows. Don't get bogged down in talking about the information which isn't essential for the student. Miller's Law. This is called, also known as the Rule of Seven. The number of objects an average human can hold in short-term memory is seven plus or minus two. So as you go through this level three training, be wary of overloading the student with too much information. Okay, here are some tips how to be an effective trainer with the time that you've been given with your learner. So first of all, provide clear instructions on performance expectations and criteria. Focus your attention and the learner's attention. Connect knowledge to practice. Be a role model. Make sure that in that trainer role that you're demonstrating appropriate attitudes to things like other drivers, uh, health and safety, alcohol and drugs, and fatigue management. Help students take ownership over their own learning. Communicate your message in a variety of ways. Manage the expectations of the trainer, student, or parent slash guardian. And don't lose the client. Don't yell and berate the student. Don't be sarcastic and call them names. Treat them with respect and treat every learner as, as an individual in that moment and meeting their special needs. Promote deliberate practice. Now deliberate practice, sometimes called rehearsal, keeps the information in our short-term memory long enough for it to move to long-term memory. Once it is in our long-term memory, it can be built upon to create more and more complex associations. Deliberate practice takes time. Feedback is another really important part of level three training. Feedback is most effective when it contains descriptions of how students work, meets performance criteria, and what students can do to improve. Feedback should also be focused on the learning process. Whenever we're delivering, tra delivering training, we'll have a plan. And we can see here that we've got a blue car desiring to travel from the left side of the screen to the orange flag on the right. Note that there's not too many hurdles or hazards in that pathway. However, in reality, as much planning the trainers can do, the journey for the white car to get to the desired destination might be very challenging. So we keep our eye on the goal, but also we have to get through each challenge one step at a time. Managing risk. As you proceed through your training program, remember the following steps and apply them. Step one, identify the hazards. Two, decide who might be harmed and how. Step three, evaluate the risks and decide on the precautions. Step four, record your findings and implement them. And step five, review your assessment and update if necessary. Make sure before you conduct any level three training that you've done a cabin drill with your student. Also, Keep training your students in an awareness of their controls. That includes the steering wheel controls, 
the dash, instrument, cluster, lights and dials, warning lights and console controls. Let's shift our focus now to the driving components. The trainer will teach the learner to scan, observe and monitor the driving environment in every direction as appropriate to the driving task. Let's take a look at how we do that with our vision principles. First of all, what is known as the eagle eye. The eagle eye is among the strongest in the animal kingdom, with an eyesight estimated at four to eight times stronger than that of the average human. So although you don't have the eyes of an eagle, just visualize what it's like for that eagle looking long range. That should be one of your learner driver's strategies as they face traffic situations. Now, the South Australian government promotes the 12, looking 12 seconds ahead. So in a 60 kilometer per hour zone, this means looking up to 200 meters ahead and on the freeway at a 90 kilometer hour, it is up to 300 meters ahead. So look long and if your vision is compromised, then it may require, well, it will probably require you to slow down and assess the situation until it is clear to proceed. The next principle of vision is eyes on the move. Remember the meerkat. The learner must keep the eyes constantly moving. In the distance, at the road surface, to your left and right, and regularly at your, mir at your mirrors and instruments. The meerkat has a lot of predators, so they have to be vigilant and keep their eyes peeled and eyes on the move. Do the same in any traffic environment. Move your head. Remember the owl. The owl has an amazing ability to rotate its head. When you're driving a car, a truck, a motorbike, whatever, you need to move your head and scan the road environment. This includes shoulder checks, also known as head checks. The trainer will teach the learner to conduct a shoulder check involving a quick turn of the head, either left or right, to look out the side window. Shoulder checking is an important way to see what's in your blind spots. Remember the rabbit. If you look at where the rabbit's eyes are positioned, they have a greater peripheral vision than humans. So use your peripheral vision so you can see what's out, the, out to the sides. Peripheral vision is vision as it occurs outside the point of fixation, that is, away from the center of gaze. Question. Is there a formula or system I can use for teaching a learner? One such system, system is the system of vehicle control. The system of car control is a drill, each step of which is to be considered in sequence by the driver at the appro approach to any hazard. What is a hazard? A hazard is anything dangerous or potentially dangerous that a driver may encounter. For example, a roundabout, speed bump, overtaking maneuver, intersection, accident scene, sharp bend, etc. In short, anything which would or could interrupt your progress. The benefits of the system of car control. By correct application of the system, the vehicle will always be in the correct place on the road, traveling at the correct speed, with the correct gear engaged. The trainer will teach the learner to one, set the course, Two, mirror check. Three, signal. Four, brake and position. Five, gears and mirrors. Six, evasive action. Let's break these steps down now one at a time. So step one, set the course. The trainer will teach the learner to scan ahead, identify hazards, make a plan, and prepare to respond. This includes identifying signs, signals, and road markings, as well as directional markings such as these seen at this intersection. Also identifying a pedestrian crossing up ahead, identifying children's crossings, and level crossings. Step two, mirrors. The trainer will teach the learner to use the rear vision mirrors on the approach to any hazard or potential hazard. Step three, signal. The trainer will teach the learner to signal in the correct direction long enough to give sufficient warning to other drivers and pedestrians when intending to turn, diverge, 
move into the edge of the road or curb, enter a line of traffic at a T-section where the continuing road curves to the left slash right, leaving the continuing road to proceed straight ahead onto the terminating road. Step four, speed and position. The trainer will teach the learner to reduce speed to a safe rate of approach and arrival at the hazard. And two, move into the correct position to take a turn. Step five, gears and mirrors. The trainer will teach the learner to select the correct gear appropriate for speed, vehicle and driving conditions. Check mirrors again before entering the hazard zone. Step six, evasive action. The trainer will teach the learner to avoid any potentially dangerous situation which may have developed. For example, give way or stop. Operate the accelerator pedal smoothly and progressively for both acceleration and deceleration. What is giving way? To give way to another vehicle or a pedestrian means A. If that vehicle or pedestrian is stopped, you must remain stationary until it is safe to proceed. B. In any other case, slow down and, if necessary, stop to avoid a collision. Right turns. The trainer will teach the learner to negotiate a variety of right turn situations, including lane and unlaned roads, roundabouts, traffic lights, stop signs, giveaway signs, and uncontrolled intersect crossroads. The trainer will teach the learner to select and maintain an appropriate position on approach, during, and immediately after the turn. Let's take a look at the system of vehicle control in the example on the screen. Step one. Set the course. Step two, check the mirrors. Step three, signal. Step four, brake and position. Step five, gears and mirrors. And step six, evasive action. Continuing on the theme of right turns, let's look more specifically at the, that now. When turning right, signal right. Move as close to the center line as possible. When turning onto a multi-lane road, turn right from the right lane or a lane with an arrow pointing right. Turn right when it is safe. In marked lanes, you must stay in the same lane as you go from one road to another. You must give way to pedestrians crossing the road into which you are turning. So here are some of our level three training situations. We've got crossroads. And that includes taking right turns, left turns, and going straight ahead. Then we have crossroads with giveaway signs. And finally, crossroads with stop signs. We have crossroads with uncontrolled situations, that is, no signage or traffic lights. And now let's take a look at left turns. The trainer will teach the learner, the learner to negotiate a variety of left turn situations, including lane and unlaned roads, roundabouts, traffic lights, stop signs, giveaway signs, and uncontrolled crossroads. The trainer will teach the learner to select and maintain an appropriate position on approach, during, and immediately after the turn. Additional traffic situations to cover for level three learners. First of all, roundabouts. The learner may have already encountered some simple roundabouts, but again, working from the simple to the complex, start your student off on simple roundabouts and work them into more multi-lane and oddly shaped roundabouts as you go. Intersections, such as one-way intersections, places like Stanley Street and Vulture Street in the Gabba, just east of Brisbane. Uncontrolled intersections stop signs and stop lines, give way, controlled signals, and high speed zones, greater than 80 kilometers per hour, for example, on the freeway or motorway. Don't forget uh, speed, special speed zones like roadworks and shared zones. Traffic density, 
look for some heavy traffic situations to drive in, as well as lane driving. That includes lane changes, one-way streets, marked lanes, unmarked lanes, driving on wide lanes, driving on narrow lanes, driving around curbs and bends, driving into a high-speed merge situation. Let's take a look now at defensive driving skills we will cover in level three situations. Judgment. The trainer will teach the learner to judge and utilize a safe gap in traffic when negotiating intersections, lane changing or merging and without causing other road users to take evasive action. The applicant should make a, a correct decision and respond appropriately with regard to judgment of the speed and distance of any traffic or pedestrians. The trainer will teach the learner to ensure there is an appropriate buffer zone in front of and to the sides of the vehicle, that it, that it is in the correct position when stopped in a line of traffic. Following distance. Use the following distance formula with the learner driver in level three. The trainer will teach the learner to increase their following distance when the road is wet or slippery, when visibility is poor, if conditions are dark, when they have a heavy load, and when the road is unsealed. Speed control. The trainer will teach the learner to progress with the general flow of traffic at a speed that is not excessive for, for the situation and without exceeding the speed limit. Acceleration should be smooth, progressive and appropriate for the traffic conditions. In the diagram on the, on the right, we can see the impact of high speed driving and braking distance. Speed. The trainer will teach the learner learner that travel speed affects both the risk of a crash happening and the severity of any injuries in a crash. Even small increases in vehicle speed significantly impact on road safety risks. Stopping distance. The distance a vehicle travels from the time the learner sees an event occurring to the time the vehicle is brought to a stop is called the total stopping distance. The total stopping distance is equal to reaction time plus braking distance. Weather and time. Attempt to give your student a wide variety of weather and time and time of day driving. So we have day, night, wet weather, torrential rain, dry weather, sun glare. Maneuvers. The trainer will teach the learner the relevant maneuvers for their state and territory. Thanks for watching. This has been Brendan from Watto Training.